We have a big announcement on today's show that you don't want to miss, and you're going to want to pause the video and take action in that moment. We also have tons of your questions talking about redraft, keeper, dynasty, everything you need to know for 2023. Like the video, subscribe, and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, May 16th. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast back again. Want to wish a happy birthday to my mother. It's her, oh. bir- it's her birthday. Happy birthday. Uh, I, I would like to say happy belated Mother's Day to everyone's mother. Okay. Yeah, Any, what fine. do you got, Mike? It's fine. Uh, I would like to say hello to my mom. Oh, I, I, did, I didn't think it had to be competitive just because my mom had a birthday. But, well, well, then you, came you don't know us very well. <laughs> Uh, big show today. Thank you for joining us on the podcast. The Borgogan is here. Al Borland, not so much, but, uh, Jay Who Grizz, needs him? Jay Grizz is, is stepping in. Taking and, a lazy day. Oh man. Yeah. I, if you know him, you know how him. lazy, you know, him. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, <laughs> Guys, guys, just <laughs> this. I just, this bit is for one person. This bit is for one man. For hundreds of thousands of people <sighs> listening, and we're gonna use this time <laughs> to drive over Jeremy <laughs> with the bus, and I would say valuable use yeah. of our time. Yeah. To be yeah. honest, uh, I'm sure the judge is really enjoying it. How you doing, Judge? Doing great. Good. Good. I didn't hear the judge defend him. I'll tell you that much. No, they're <laughs> they're always at odds. Um. We promised it. We got a great show today. We have some, uh, you know, I know Jason made it through all of his, his rankings. Mike's uh, made it through or very close to that. Very, very close. And so, our, our you know, the UDK is going to be here very, very soon. All of our player projections, sleepers, breakouts, bus, we're figuring that stuff out right now. But I promise we would have a very, very, very big announcement. Oh! I'm going to let it. I just want to let it breathe. Let Jason breathe here. Oh, mega show! Yes! We have a big live event. Your eyes got so big and scary. Coming your way. (laughs) I was the shark. I was the megalodon. We are doing a gigantic, never before done, single megala show in Los Angeles. For a thousand people at an unbelievable venue, and we need y'all there. That sums it up. At the Palace Theater in Los Angeles, August 26th. It's our only live show of the year. That's a Saturday. We're doing a huge event. We want to see you there. Come watch the show live. There will be a lot of um, a lot of special things going on that day. So you do not want to miss it. If it, many of you out there, you've been to a live event. Thank you for coming. Uh, those are always so fun. The energy. I mean, look at the date. Saturday, August 26th. On the cusp of the new season. Uh, great things in store for all of you. So uh, please join us. How do you do it? It's very easy. You fly to Los Angeles. <laughs> Ballers live. Or drive or walk. Yeah. Well, or you need take a ticket. A, Don't do all yeah. those things without a ticket. That's true. First, first step. Secure your ticket. Ballerslive.com. Go there now. Secure your ticket. It will sell out. Uh, We have done a couple of shows in L.A. in the past, smaller venues. They have all asked us to do other nights because they sell out so quick in L.A. Go get the tickets. Ballerslive.com. We want to see you there. Uh, Very special Megala Show event brought to you by our friends at Underdog Fantasy. Yes. Who are sponsoring the event. And like I said, this is our only live show of the year. So 
You want to see us come find, to L.A.? Find I, your way to L.A. I know a lot of people have wanted. We, you know, we're, we've grown internationally. People have been like, when are you going to do a show in the U.K.? And look, this is an international airport destination. <laughs> so we're basically doing a U.K. show. It's just in Los Angeles where you need to fly across the globe to come see us. And, we, and we've got some cool special things uh, up our sleeves for that show. This will be uh, this will be a lot of fun. And um, I, dare I say, Al will be there. Al will probably make the trip. I don't know. He yeah. missed it last year in L.A. You remember that? Oh, yeah, man. I did. Was he Dude, being lazy? Again? Same exact <laughs> laziness. <laughs> same exact reason. I need a day off. I don't want to do the live show. But, I mean, in his voice. I could never do oh, his yeah. voice. Um, but no, this is going to be so much fun. It, you heard Jason's excitement yep. at the beginning. Be there. Um, I've heard tale of things Jason is planning on doing when he runs out on stage. My chest tattoo should be healed <laughs> by the time to rip that shirt off. You don't want to miss it. Oh now, my gosh. does does the shark wrap around to your back? Yeah, he's eating my. Oh, it's like a shark my, bite. Yes, a shark, he's eating your what? He's eating my left <laughs> breast. So you gotta want you gotta want to see this. Do Mega not miss. Tat. Do not miss this show. Yeah, it's. I mean, we we aren't gonna be able to put that on YouTube. I mean, that's some not safe for sort of work stuff. We'll definitely have to check the not for kids <laughs> box on that one. Uh, Ballerslive dot com. Go get your tickets. That's our big announcement. We will. Uh, we're going to have a really, really good time. Quick question of the day for today's show. Now that we have kind of gone through each and every team for our player projections for the upcoming rankings to be released on June 1st with the UDK, I thought this question was great. Which team's targets have been the hardest to figure out and divvy up amongst all the teams? And we each have a different answer. I don't know if that was because we just tried to find a different answer or, or these are actually the hardest, these but these are three great answers. When I saw your guys's teams, I was like, heck yeah. I mean, your guys's teams are very different in the sense that I feel like you could have a different leader for each of us from those wide receiver cores. For me, it was the giants and it was the giants just because they're taking the uh, throw spaghetti at the wall approach to yes. their, uh, wide receiver core, you've got Wandale Robinson coming back from injury, Sterling Shepard coming back from injury. Those might be their two best wide receivers, but are they going to be healthy? They've got Jalen Hyatt, new exciting rookie, but he's a rookie. Isaiah Hodgins, they signed Paris Campbell. They've got Darius Slayton. I mean, it is a they, log they jam. They did sign Jamison Crowder as well. I mean, you want to talk about the largest room of mediocre wide receivers in the league giants you you did it yeah i think that's a great pick and and just knowing how much they use saquon and the tight end and not knowing how they'll distribute any value at all to the wide receiver room i mean is there going to be any uh, for me it was the chiefs here's what i know about the chiefs <laughs> patrick mahomes will pass for more than five thousand yards this year Here's what I don't know about the Chiefs is how that distribution is going to break down among MVS, Kadarius Toney, Sky Moore, um, Rasheed, Rice. Rasheed Rice, Justin Watson, and from the aforementioned Giants who, you know, they just added Richie James who had 57 receptions last year, not for Patrick Mahomes, but for Daniel Jones for over 500 yards. And Justin Ross is still And Justin lurking. Ross is still hanging around. And so, you know, I statted six receivers. Yeah, I, I, I and did, I think we I had the same well. six. We did have the same six, but I'm curious, Mike, who you have as the target leader if you've done the Chiefs. I have in target leader. Yes, uh, target. Yeah, the the target leader is a maybe superstar who only has two career touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's Kadarius Tony for me. That's that's and where I, I would take the shot, but. I have uh, MVS with more targets than Tony, and Jason has Tony. Correct. And and in the hard part about, you know, you say breaking up the targets is that if Tony is the lead target projection, he's also always hurt. So so even sure. if you got it right, he could still get hurt, and everything gets just you know messed up. And we saw last year Sky Moore, like awful, awful rookie year, twenty two receptions total. So you've got that hanging over the hype around Rice. And um, look, I, it, it should be 
and, a and, very interesting situation of probably ping ponging uh, value. Yeah, being the target leader for Patrick Mahomes sounds so great on paper, but there is a very realistic world where the wide receiver target leader is not that great for fantasy um was, was juju the target leader last year that that's kind of how so. from memory i i believe it went down and he was okay but he was nothing special for fantasy and that could very well be the case so when we say i've got Kadarius tony down leading them in targets that still might be irrelevant with how many weapons he's going to throw to and the fact that travis kelsey is the alpha and the second target leader was mbs last year and that equated to just 600 yards and two touchdowns yep so it, it's a tough one mike what do you have as your uh one of the more difficult uh ones to figure out so the i'm in agreement with you guys on both of those i just did the giants about an hour before the show and i sat down and i was said jason how did you possibly <laughs> do this because it's a disaster uh but hey special shout out to the baltimore ravens for also having their own situation where I don't know what is going on because um, you have Odell Beckham off of his second ACL injury. Is he washed? Rashad Bateman looked okay for a couple games. And then a first-round rookie pick in Zay Flowers. And, I mean, like the Chiefs where the wide receivers won't be the number one target because that'll be Mark Andrews, but it's how does this wide receiver room shake up? And then uh, like just before the show came out, there was a tweet from uh, Michael Fabiano who had uh, let's see, Glenn Clark from a Baltimore radio station. He had him on, and gl according to Glenn Clark, at least, he was saying, as of right now, Rashad Bateman is the number one wide receiver for the team. That's how he would draft them in fantasy football. But it's it's extremely difficult because I do, I do believe one of those three guys will have like a top 30 type of value. And if it's Rashad Bateman, you'll have that value plus – spike weeks uh on top of that but i don't know which of the three and i don't know i don't know how that adp is going to shake up my my confidence in there is is not strong thankfully it's only uh may and we can get some more clarity but as of right now that is just it is as foggy as can be yeah that's another depth chart where i'm curious who the target leader is you, you can make legitimate mathematical and historical arguments for at least three different guys being the wide receiver target leader. Who who did you guys stat as the leader? I actually, this is not how I usually roll uh, with rookie wide receivers, but I have Zay Flowers leading in targets uh, season one. I have Beckham with the most targets. And I have Bateman. So there you go. Let, let, me, let me refresh your memory from last year that just, this makes it so much harder too. Do you know how many total tight end targets there were for the Baltimore Ravens last year? I, between Andrews and Likely? No, just the tight end position in total. I do, but that that's not fair. 204. I, yeah. So Andrews was only 113 of that. If you watch Isaiah Likely, that's another weapon they have in the room that can, yes. you know, he, he might be a better weapon than Beckham is, right, in totality. And so you have multiple tight ends. Last year, I know it's going to be different, but wide receivers were 225 in targets. Tight ends were 204. That is almost the same amount of targets between those two rooms. Yeah, with Greg Roman, the personnel having likely having no wide receivers healthy or available or talented. I, I you know, I, I think it will shift dramatically this year with Todd Monken coming in, drafting Zay Flowers, bringing in Odell. I, th I think they'll run a little bit more eleven personnel. And that's one of the things going through all of the rankings that was really interesting to me is like, tr you know, we do the things to remember show, and one of the things to remember for me was these changes don't always work out, whether it's head coach or offensive coordinator. Like, percentage-wise every year, philosophical changes, yes, they come in, they arrive, you hire somebody else, you want to fix the situation. But a lot of them don't work. And, and identifying which situations you think, look, this they needed a fresh, um, you know, you brought up like maybe the Chargers, right, would be one that kind of seemed like obviously stale, yes. probably can't get worse. Like, I think that might be a good way to go about it is like, which offensive situations probably can't get worse that will get better as opposed to, mm -hmm. you know, looking at something like Dallas where, look, statistically they were great. So, like, they have a lot of room to get worse. Whereas a team like the Chargers, they had a lot of, like, obvious issues. So maybe that's one that you can feel more secure about projecting improvement. Baltimore is one of those as well, potentially, where they were just so – but they were also hurt, so it, those are hard. Yeah, it, it would be very difficult to imagine Baltimore's offense being worse in 2023 
than it was with the talent and injuries in 2022. Just take Lamar away. That would be a problem. That would do it. Hopefully we get a healthy season out of uh, the very wealthy Lamar Jackson. Well earned. News and notes from around the league. Apparently this is news from, oh, the, from the footcast. Not I, I, just news. This was important. This is very important. Uh, not mega la show important of announcement, but we do have a correction that we need to issue. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, someone in, the, in our Discord let us know. Uh, I pronounced the new tight end uh, from Dallas. I called him Luke Schoonmaker, which How appar- could you? apparently it is, in fact, Schoonmaker, which <laughs> makes the Schoonman reference even Schoonman. Oh, look, you got to come together with, with your hands, your hands. <laughs> and save me. So it makes the joke even better. So I am very happy to report that we were wrong, and it is better. It is now better. It is the Schoonman. Yeah, his name is spelled S A S C H. Yeah, he, it's spelled. But it is a, what, what did I see? It's a Dutch name, and so it's pronounced Schoonman. <laughs> So this is the top of our news, Brooks. Yeah. This is the top. I did oh, yeah. say priorities. I did Darn right. tell him make sure this is yeah. at the top of the news. Did you? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Brooks is nodding. Um, all right, here we go. Jeremy Fowler reports there's not a clear cut avenue for Dalvin Cook to be traded at the moment. Uh, the uh, the Vikings over the weekend uh, they moved their uh, illustrious defensive end Zedaria Smith. Right. I mean, yeah, they're. We we knew they were going to make some salary cap moves. That was one of the mo- when you when you listen to the beat reporters around Minnesota, they thought they'd salvage Smith and Cook might be out the door. They didn't. They moved uh, Zadarius Smith to Cleveland. Right now, the team, all the signs, it looks like they're moving on from Dalvin Cook, but he hasn't been moved yet. And I, according to reports, they want to do right by him. They'd like to put him in a situation he wants to be in. Obviously, if they cut him. He can choose his situation. Yeah, that's. Uh, we want to put him in the best situation for him. Well, then cut him. Let him. Let him go. Sign a deal because the, that's the best situation for Dalvin Cook. What they want to do is have something back because they want the best situation for them. Which I don't blame them. That's their job. But you can't be like we just want what's best for Dalvin. If you do, they do. But they also want that team to financially yeah, I mean, they, help out. They have what till June first. They they do. If they were going to cut him, though, you can mark it post June first and and cut him now so he can go visit teams and try to make a deal. So no conclusion to the Delvin Cook saga just yet. Here's some big news, in my opinion, especially when looking at the Saints and projecting them for yeah. the season. There's a full expectation. Absolutely was the word head coach Dennis Allen used on whether Foster Moreau will be ready for the start of OTAs. It's Foster great, Moreau great story. just signed a deal, three-year deal. And uh, when you look at what was being reported about his uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma, they said it was like a, somehow the one of the least invasive cases that they had seen was the word that was put out there. So uh, he expects to be playing. And that, you know, he's a, he's a good tight end. I mean, yes, you, he is. when you look at kind of a breakout season in store for Juwan Johnson and you take Foster Moreau. It hurts. Uh, you know, who had a 420 year, yards receiving last year. That's bigger production than what you had with Troutman there. So uh, it does muddy that water a little bit, especially when you know that Taysom Hill is going to get snaps too. Also from the Saints, Michael Thomas, quote, had hardware removed from his injured foot about a week ago. I oh, I don't man. know. Has it been three years of talking about Michael Thomas injuries and I'm, I'm hardware ready. and surgery? I am ready for fool fool me for rice or whatever. That's the, what for fool for me it, quattro yeah. uh, because I will I will be ready to go back in. Oh, you're oh, I didn't I didn't see you go. So you are willing yes. to make the mistake again? Yes. I mean, over those first two games, twenty five percent, twenty three percent target share. Uh, five for fifty-seven and two touchdowns. Six for sixty-five with a score. Like it, it it's a, it's going to be a high-risk maneuver, but you're not going to, it's not going to be high-risk ADP-wise. So he, I, I imagine he's going to settle into a point where I'm willing to take the chance. And to be fair, this procedure to have the hardware removed is not a big procedure. It shouldn't be something that you are worried about. In fact, this could be an upgrade. A lot of players, once they have the original procedure done, don't like playing with it and get it removed. 
Wide receiver. Yeah, another appro- in another best approach ball. you could take is just nope. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. One hundred percent. That's one of the more that one I never worry about the hardware. Yeah. One one hundred percent. You can you can make that decision. Um, but it was just like to me, those first two games were at least. Uh, oh yeah, Michael Thomas can still play. Yeah. I mean, it's tough. It's tough to make the judgment call on whatever it was eleven receptions in a couple games. We yeah. hadn't, we hadn't seen him. It's a pretty clear depth chart. I mean, I like Rashid Shahid. Um, but he's a, Olave he's, is going to be a star. It's Olave and Thomas. The tight ends, but you won't have Kamara to start the year, so you're going to have a lot of opportunity for Thomas. Really tough, though, to bet on a wide receiver who has played so few games in the last several years and then hearing, oh, another, another little, oh, it's minor. It's just another minor surgery. The amount of times that we heard, oh, this ankle issue is not a big deal, and then he misses a whole season. It's, it, it's disconcerting. If this was a 22-year-old having a minor procedure done, I'd be far more likely to be like, okay, he should he should recover well, and I'm confident that this isn't an issue. I I imagine I know your your guys' answer, but I think there are there are kind of some parallels here, at least over the last two seasons, for Michael Thomas and Kadarius Tony. Now Kadarius Tony doesn't have Michael Thomas's history of four straight years being a, a wide receiver one. But like Tony will be Tony will be drafted. Kyle, what's what's Kadarius Tony going right now in best ball? I'll look it up real quick. Okay, so I, like people, I think are going to be more excited for Kadarius Tony, and to me, like they're well, that's fair. They're equally risky, and but I know for sure that Michael Thomas can play. Yeah, so Tony is wide receiver thirty five, so ten spots apart positionally right now in best ball. I think it's a very fair point. You've seen a an offense be run entirely through Michael Thomas. You have never seen that with Kadarius Tony. And my biggest worry with Tony is that Andy Reid's smart, and I think a smart Andy Reid doesn't make Kadarius Tony the linchpin of your offense. You run a bunch of smart stuff with him the way you did. You know, you use McCole Hardman a certain way. You use Juju a certain way. I think that's what they'll do with Tony. And if Tony gets hurt, then they'll, you know, it's not undermining your whole offense. Thomas. Tony, both very risky. I don't know which one. I mean, if you're talking ten picks later, but I think just, I guess I'd be Thomas. That's just positionally too. That doesn't. That's not just like ten ADP spots. Man, that's a tough one. Yeah, I mean, I, I've currently got Kadarius Tony as my wide receiver, thirty-three, and Michael Thomas at forty-one. So I'm about where they are ADP. I'm going to take the younger player with Patrick Mahomes. They both have a path towards being good for fantasy um, and a lot of risk. Agreed. Speaking of risk, no one more risky than this guy, Javante Williams. Sean Payton spent some time talking about Javante Williams. It was like, um, you ever see that meme with that woman whose face is like smiling and then it goes. <laughs> oh, the kombucha lady. And then it goes down and then it yeah. goes. You go, hey. Is that what she does? Oh. She's trying some kombucha. Yeah. And Maybe? she's like. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. No. <laughs> uh, that was what I was doing when I read <laughs> Sean Payton talk about Javante Williams saying uh, various quotes, including our current starter, Javante, is doing extremely well. I would tell you that we expect him to be ready for the start of training camp. That's the quote that's been shared the most. When the headlines, I think, that made their rounds on Twitter was, Javante's going to be ready for training camp. He's healthy. He's good to go. And, and then, that's not really what it was. <laughs> yeah, and then he, he goes on and says, we're pretty tight-lipped relative to information going out. I've read a lot, and I think his rehab is going well. That's interesting to me. He's read a lot. He's probably not. This is not I firsthand read, eye uh, testimony. Read many books. And then he says, we're hopeful that he is someone that might not have to go on pup. Yeah. Hold on. Hopeful that he is someone that might not I mean, this is, have to go on This pup. is J.K. It feels like J.K. Dobbins' situation entirely where, remember Dobbins was like, I'm there. I'm going to be yeah. there. Yeah. And oh, it's like, Dobbins bodied, was it Schefter oh, or oh, no, it was uh, Rappaport. Rappaport? Yeah. When, he's like, I'll be there week one. You don't know what you're talking about. And then. So where do you but draft? He was not there week one. <laughs> where do you draft? Hopefully, maybe because that's what my nickname for him will be. Hopefully, maybe. Uh, one, first of all, great nickname. Really like that because we love Javante. He's super talented. Um, I'm going to take the risk on Javante pretty late. I don't. You know, I. This is a lot of coach speak, and like you just said, he's read reports. He's hopeful for maybe blah blah. blah. I'm going to follow like I don't know medical science and timelines of when he got injured, what his injury was, and the expectation that he should not be 
ready week one, and if he is, he should not be full strength. So I will err on the side of caution. Right now he is still my leader in the backfield, but he's outside the top 30 at running back. So if he falls far in a draft, I might scoop him up, but have I don't you? have many shares. You are, I say, you are a, a best ball king right now. How much Javante have you drafted? Oh, man, I think I grabbed him in one league. So uh, that is really low Yeah, I, for the amount of leagues you're in. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I don't grab a lot of Javante Williams for this season. Yeah, I have P. Ryan with more total carries on the year. So it's He also came out and talked about P. Ryan, talked about how he's, you know, can be basically a true workhorse back a carry load, which he might need to do. Yeah, he will. Four point one a carry last year for Samaj P. Ryan. Um two more bits of news we gotta get into. One, the Panthers are not taking the route of going and saying Bryce Young's going to start week one the way that, you know, the Cardinals did with Kyler when they brought him in. Instead, they are placating the red rifle. Andy Dalton will get first team reps at OTAs. Yeah, that's good. They said it's going to be wide open. Who need who needs all the first team reps? Come on. Not what, like what is he transitioning from college to the NFL? Who needs those? Now, tell me the truth, Jason. When you saw this news, did it lower your opinion of Frank Reich? It well, I I tried not to think about how it affected my opinion of Frank Reich. It did make me roll my eyes into my soul. Right. Um, it's just and what so did you dumb. see there? What I saw is Bryce Young starting week one. Okay. Yes. Because Bryce Young will start week one. Yes, he will. And because he's starting week one and the whole world knows he's starting week one, I feel like he should get the, now, all the first team reps. Can I remind you, though? That was the way people talked about Justin Fields, and guess who started week one for Mr. Nagy? Yeah. Uh, Andy he, he was, Dalton. Oh, it's Dalton. It's Andy him. Andy Dalton makes a great impression in OTAs and training camp. We'll say the uh, Carolina Panthers traded up to number one overall and not grabbed, yeah, uh, but, not trading up to get Fields at – 13 or Dalton 11 I think yeah. Dalton bakes a mean scone and so oh he's is that he's the he's, he's bringing the, the scone king. in yeah he's he's pulling a Ted Lasso and the he's bringing in baked, king? <laughs> baked treats and saying hey dude I am ready of course he'd bring a scone any normal person would bring some donuts yeah, I thought about much, donuts and much easier to eat food that's much more delicious and a, is a liter uh, alliteration with your name scone right. is such a second or third string backup thing to bring yes yeah. walks in Oh, I got some scones. Oh, you guys talking over the depth chart, huh? <laughs> some scones. How is this? Waft, waft. Scones are there for dry mouth. <laughs> to receive dry to mouth. To receive it. Yes, not to cure it. <laughs> not to cure it, no. <laughs> I'm parched. Have Pass some... me a scone. <laughs> All right, I'm going to blow your mind right now. I'm going to blow your mind. We're sitting down this week, Sleepers Breakouts, Busting Values, and I uh -huh. one of the names that I I'm, I am very, very, don't, very. Don't you dare. Yeah, I'm very, with you, man. I'm very, no. Very no. sure I want on that list. Yes, no. I'm with you. No, or, and I'm going to put it in the value category. But you can, you don't. can. He's that's a, where he belongs. Don't, don't do this. Yes, to me, I guys. love it. I love it. Antonio, I'm not strong enough. Gibson, hundred percent. Ron Rivera coming out. We got the hype train going once again. Every year, Mike is head. I can't, guys. I can't do this again. Mike's got his uh, head in his hand. Rivera says he wants to get more touches for Antonio Gibson. Why do I believe it now and not before? Because of Eric Bieniemy. Because I think the best player should be playing in Washington. Antonio Gibson is the best player. I've thought that for a while. And you you have. <laughs> I don't remember you ever saying it on the show. No, you've said that for years. He only averaged 13 touches a game in 2022. The versatility of Antonio Gibson, his pathway, and there are people listening that are like, "What are you talking about? Why would you? Why would you say this?" It's a great question because I've never have before. But the reason why is because the pathway to fantasy relevance for Antonio Gibson, uh, it's like the board game where you get the shortcut, okay? Some running backs, you got to go each spot on oh, the board little, all the way to the end. Little shoots and ladders Little shoots action. and ladders. Antonio Gibson, he goes up the ladders three or four times on his way to fantasy relevance because of his receiving capability in the offense. I've had Brian Robinson Jr. on my team. It is a slog, all right? It takes play after play after play after play. Please, touchdown, please, touchdown. No touchdown. Okay, you're 18 for 59, and you didn't score. 
Antonio Gibson is so versatile. If that 13 touches goes up to 17, instant fantasy gold at the value. Well, I don't, where's his best ball uh, spot? RB 42. Oh, please. Yeah, he, he's he's been great. He's and kind they, of our guy, Jason. Yeah, we've we've he's <laughs> kind of been our champion. He's kind of for as long I would as call him our champ. Our the world champ. will not stand for this. <laughs> yeah, I think that the Foot Clan's going to remember our champion, Antonio yeah. Gibson, Andy and I's champion. <laughs> um, but J.D. McKissick is also gone. And if yeah. you look, J.D. McKissick was extremely involved in the passing game the first eight weeks last year before his unfortunate injury. He was on pace for 85 targets out of the running back room and and the running back room around Gibson is not pass catcher. So I do think with the enemy there, the vacated targets from McKissick and Gibson's skill set, I've got him receiving over 50 receptions in 2023 and that just makes him a value in general. He has increased his reception total and his yards per catch each of his 3 years in the league. I think if we spend time on this Jason, we can get Mike on board. I, I just think if we... I will say I have not statted the Manders yet. Oh, boy. Uh-oh. So I will take this information. Uh, running it. back to Antonio Gibson. <laughs> I'm told he's very Christian McCaffrey-like. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. We're back. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I'm still... We'll still see where we head yeah. beyond May here. Um, any other news, Brooksy? No, sir. All right. Quick break. Back with some mailbag. I love it so much that you're on board with Gibson too, Jason. Oh yeah, I I was curious at first which way you were going to go. Um, oh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah that's because fair. I know you haven't really been a. Uh, I mean, you, he's always been your champion, of course, but um, <laughs> right, secretly, see, secretly, because you, you, yeah, publicly been, I've yeah. denounced him. But, right, but he's always been my secret champion. The the depth chart and the offensive coordinator make a lot of sense for Gibson to to have a great utilization for fantasy relevance. Um, I wonder how many people listening right now have gone to ballerslive.com and purchased tickets for the live show. I hope it's all of them. Because Well, it can't be all of them. We only have a thousand seats, Mike. Well, I, I just know that this is a signed seating, right? Yes. It is. Yep. Pick your So you gotta hurry chair. up. Ballers live mailbag if, time. If Antonio Gibson can have oh, he's thinking about it already. a monster season and then they bring him a contract and he just Goes dub fingers. Oh, he and, turns it down. Yeah, and goes, no, I'm going to hit the market, and I, I will be treated like the champion that I truly am, Ron. And then he won't, Ronald. Get, he won't get money because he's a running back. <laughs> Stop it, Jason. You don't dub fingers a contract. If you're no, a running you back, no, you, don't. you do the two, four fingers, and you say, yes, give me. Come. Does, does anyone have a pen? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you sign it sight unseen. If it says the word contract at running back, you take it. Bag. Bang, oh, bang, ooh, yeah. All right, if you have a question for the show, you can send it our way, thefantasyfootballers.com. Visit the site, click the Submit a Question button, or dial the voicemail hotline. That number is 302-464-TFFB. Leave us a voicemail question. First question today comes in from Philbo Baggins. Oh. It's a cousin. Uh, is zero RB a more viable strategy than ever this year? What do you think? I think no. I think it will be a more common strategy this year. Um, what really makes it stand out and work the best is when it is zigging when other people are zagging. Right now, I, I think the reason people are thinking this is a great year for Zero RB is actually backwards from reality. They're thinking this because people are wide receiver crazy in the first few rounds. Running backs are being pushed to the third and fourth round where you know that's usually the start of the dead zone, and you're thinking – I don't want running backs there right now. It's like, oh, I, I actually really like the running backs that are there because so many wide receivers, at least in like underdog best ball drafts right now, are going much higher than the running backs. But what that does is that, you know, what made Zero RB so great is that you were getting at the end of the first round the the best and the second best. That's where historically yes. you were grabbing what would be the Justin Jefferson and Cooper Cup combo because everyone went crazy on running backs. Right now, if you're going zero RB and you're at the end of the first round, which is, I guess, usually more where, where I play it. I, I know some people play it from anywhere. But now you're getting, you know, the wide receiver eight and nine to to start your 
uh, that, draft uh, off and probably not that bad. No, it, well, an underdog. You're saying you it? Are. Oh, an underdog. Yeah, but, uh, and we do need to be careful. But underdog I'm saying, like is, in a redraft. Are you happy with in a redraft? It could be Tyreek and Diggs. Yeah, I think that that's that's reasonable. And, and or Adams those and guys, Diggs. Yeah, Adams is usually around there, and and Diggs can fall there. This this year though feels like. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, I, it was like our second or third year of the fantasy footballers, and it was the running backs were drafted real, real heavy, and they, like across the position, they tanked, and they were just very, very poor, which is what it was this past year, and the exact same thing happened. The pendulum went completely the other direction. Everyone said, no, running backs are a disaster. They're all way too dangerous, and all the wide receivers went early. Running backs came back and had a a monster season, and you had you know some real real league winners at the position. So I don't I wouldn't say it's more viable this year than ever because, like Jason said, the the dead zone is of running backs that you don't want to reach for. That's going to be pushed down. So you're going to be in the third, maybe even the fourth round, and have a very viable starting running back available to you. So it's it it's all about the market. Like that's what you're playing. You're playing the ADP and in zero running back, you're trying to collect a whole bunch of top 20 wide receivers. I'm not sure that you're going to be able to do that easily this year, de depending on your draft slot. I, I wonder th then if that's the point where it's not two wide receivers. I wonder if that's the Kelsey spot. Oh, yeah. The, the, you know Ke what I mean? You, and, Kelsey and, and quarterbacks and stuff. The, I mean, the, the whole kind of point is that running backs get hurt. The running backs that you draft later, uh, they appreciate in value because they – they get touches later on in the year mm -hmm. due to injuries yeah, in front of them. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's not viable. I just don't think it's specifically more viable this year than other years. Yeah, but people that have been burned by running back injuries may turn to it, therefore making it more common, like you said. And if that's the case, then first rounds might look a little different. Yeah. All right, this question, it's about a team we talked about earlier. Uh, Powder East 77, is Darren Waller the top target for the Giants passing game this year? Oh, so yeah, I think it's worth talking about them briefly. I have Darren Waller with 98 targets on the season. That would make him the target leader. I have him for 94 as the target leader. So we are we are in line there. I have him at 112. You know what's funny? As the target leader. That means that all three of our teams that we said we have a hard time kind of figuring out the wide receiver room is yes. because all three teams had the target leader at tight end. Yes. Oh, Kelsey, Andrews, and Waller. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense, and and it's the Giants. I don't know if you mentioned it earlier. You know, I've seen some projections from other people in the industry that some people think Sterling Shepard is going to be their top target at the wide receiver room, despite coming back from two catastrophic Dude, injuries. I mean, I the, the 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 amount of opinions are swaying all. Over. Paris Campbell had a billion targets last year. Wandale, what's his potential? Yeah, uh, and then of course last year actually was Slayton and Hodgins, so. What a mess! It and man for a team that doesn't really the fact, yeah, yeah, the, the impress fact you that Wandale tore his ACL during the breakout game. I think he was at like ten for a hundred already in that game, and then got the injury. What could have been for the rest of the season, but and but Sterling Shepard after uh, an Achilles injury, coming back from that, yeah, uh, like I'm not I'm not betting completely against Shepard. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I think he will be involved. He's, he is at, at a 9.0 on my risk meter. Oh yeah. But, oh yeah. But he is a, he is a great player and has all, like he has the opportunity to be their number one wide receiver as crazy as it is. 30 years old, catastrophic injury. Yeah. It's not a, could non, be the number one. It's not a non-zero chance. All right. Uh, let's go to a voicemail. Hey ballers. Doc here from Atlanta. A little unsolicited love. I just joined a, a Foot Clan Dynasty League. I've never done Dynasty before. All strangers. And it's been awesome. So this is just me saying I'm surprised. I don't know why, but I am. And it's a good surprise. And thank you, guys. You're doing a service. So I salute and uh, <laughs> curse to you. Dude, that is Keep awesome. good work. Thanks. That he gets reception in the middle of the woods like that is... Oh, Are those crickets? I thought he was just for, chilling for, with his parakeets. Yeah, his birds just chirping away. He's uh, he's out on the porch. See, I thought you were going to jump in and say, oh, thanks for the voicemail. <laughs> no, no, no. I was, <laughs> thanks for the beautiful birds chirping. But also, that is awesome. Footland yeah. Leagues, 
Um, yeah, the, the best way to get there is you can just become a part of our Discord community, which is um, discord.gg slash fantasy footballers. Um, we put all the, the Foot Clan League stuff up on the Discord. It's a super easy way to find quality players. I mean, nothing ruins a league more than three or four players that aren't paying attention. It just completely um, snuffs out any of the joy in a league if you don't have active, energetic people that are engaged with their teams and wanting to play. And so we've we've heard that story uh, many times about people finding lifelong friends in these communities and, and leagues that, you know, it doesn't matter where you live, right? You just want to be a part of a community of people that love playing and uh, bring that challenge to the game and – like I, I'm all for beating grandma in the family league, but heck yeah! I mean, Jason definitely <laughs> take is. that, like, Grams. I mean, she's been mouthing off. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, check that out. Uh, there's also a link to the Discord on our website in the upper right, thefantasyfootballers.com. If you want to click over there, I appreciate it. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool to hear. All right, uh, Neil M. Cherry says uh, he wants to know how long does it take for us to film every episode. Oh, well, look at the, the, the time stamp at the end of the show, and that's how long it took. Yeah, for a, a little longer for the producers. Well, I'm talking about, the, but not the filming, not yeah, the post-production. Right. Not the filming. The filming is yeah. just the capture. Yeah, I the mean, I know, I know everything on this show seems so like edited to perfection sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, you'd be surprised to know <laughs> we don't edit anything because uh, Brooks doesn't know how. He's never figured out how to actually clip anything, and so you just put it up, right, Brooks? Yeah, I'm so thankful you guys are so professional. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, you'd have to figure that out. He, he can't, <laughs> we can't even trim the beginning and the end. It's no. just, okay, we're going to record in three, two, <laughs> hit the button, and then it's always it always times up perfect. No, so for us, it's pretty easy. We sit down, we record, and then uh, these guys get it going. Well, these guys minus, you know. Yeah. Lazy bones. Of course. Yeah. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, J. Lucas, ten thirteen. How confident are you in Cooper Cup this season coming off his injury? Is he still in the top tier of wide receivers? Well, good friend, uh, J. Lucas. He's he's uh he's, he's sitting at number one on my rankings. Yeah, I'd, I'd put my confidence very high. I think I have Jefferson number one, but uh, it's let me let me just verify. I haven't asked you that. Oh Jason. no, no, I'm wrong. Cooper Cup is number one. <laughs> really? Yeah, I love to hear where, it. Where is he for you, Jay? Uh, Cooper Cup is number two for me. Justin Jefferson did come out uh, on top, uh, so which is surprising because I am as big a Cooper Cup believer as anyone. He is certainly um, one of the highest. Uh, if you want to know how confident are we in, you know, a 30 year old, he's coming off of the injury. The team's not that great. Yada 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 nonsense. Um, if I look at my underdog uh, exposure rate, he is near the top of the list because if I'm in the middle of the first round and some people are letting Cooper Cup slide, which I'll take Cooper Cup basically at three or four, depending on uh, my mood, um, and, and I've seen him drop to seven to me, and I will grab him anywhere in that range. So his, you know, you look at the depth chart for the Rams, and it's like I don't know how Cooper Cup doesn't, receive 800,000 targets this year. And as far as the injury goes, this was an injury he could have came back from much quicker. They didn't need him to come back at the end of last year. He's got the entire offseason. There is no doubt he'll be ready for the offseason programs. I would assume he is ready to go right now. Um, and, you know, every, everything should be great for Cooper Cup going forward. Just a reminder, th uh, eight games played for Cooper Cup, eight full games in which he averaged uh, 11 and a half targets, nine receptions, over 100 yards, and basically a full touchdown per game. Like, yeah. that's that's what he was averaging. Matthew Stafford is healthy. He'll be returning. The defense, I think, will be much worse. No Jalen Ramsey. And, uh, you know, this is, this is lining up to be a huge opportunity for Stafford and Cup, I think. I think what Jason said about the – the wide receiver room is why I think Van Jefferson could have a decent season because somebody has to. Now, will I be the one taking the second receiver in uh, in Los Angeles and, and putting it out there on this podcast? No, I won't. Mm, too late. We'll let somebody else do that. He's no Terry McLaurin. Um, no one is. No, he isn't. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's time for this. It's the beat. 
You would have thought it'd stop after the draft, no, but nope. Never. Uh, all right. Reneville, 81, says, is B. John Robinson a first-round pick in redraft? Yep. Uh, right on the edge for me. I mean, I've got him at running back seven in my ranking, so, uh, you know, if you're mixing in a couple of the wideouts, maybe Travis Kelsey, I think that means yes. He is a first-round pick to me, and honestly, if you – Want to take him at the 102, I think that's... In redraft. Yeah, I think that's perfectly fine. I, w I would still take Christian McCaffrey ahead of him, but if you want to take the gamble... like If, if you want to have more fun... Because here's the, the, the it, an issue in draft where you have a slot is like, well, I have the 102, I, but I want Bijan on my team, but I'm, I know I'm supposed to take these other guys. No, man. Like By the end of the year... B. John Robinson could easily be the number one overall running back. So I, I think I think taking him at the 102 is very reasonable. I think I like that train of thought where you say which players could be number one overall and reducing you know, your selection to that group where I know I think Jason has Saquon quite a bit higher than I do. Could Saquon be number one overall? Sure, yes, yeah. he could. I mean, McCaffrey, Eckler, yeah. Um, do I think Jacobs? Yeah, I think he's, he's in the mix. Bijan, yeah, Taylor. So it's yeah. just it, it's just a reminder of you don't have to be locked into what the ADP is telling you. We, we, no matter where you draft, there's rankings and there's an ADP and it's telling you this is who probably would go next. Don't worry about that. If if you have the belief that Bijan is your guy, take Bijan. Age twenty one rookie running backs with top fifteen draft capital over the last decade: Saquon, Zeke, Gurley, CMC. They were all RB ones in the rookie season. Bijan is going to be very good. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't know that he'll be a top three running back, but I, I would be genuinely <clears throat> shocked. Oh, is he, were you kind of – Yeah, I was getting, getting choked up. Tearing up a little bit. You know, this yeah. is the Bijan minute, so you know, this is kind of it's near and dear. the Bijan minute. I would be shocked if he's not a running back one at the end of the year. They're going to have him be the center of this offense that is very efficient at running the ball. They're going to pass to him a ton. The volume is there. The only thing, I mean, any running back can get injured, but his security is as high as anyone, and his ceiling is unknown and also as high as anyone. Yeah, the, the, the only question mark in my mind has nothing to do with Bijan. I think Arthur Smith is going to use him correctly. It, it it literally is just, is this quarterback, are there going to be games that he, like, completely falls on his face and that disrupts his opportunity. Yes, like, but Bijan will carry him. Well, I, I'm just bringing it up because like Malik Willis had opportunities and Derrick Henry suffered because of it when it wasn't Ryan Tannehill. Sure. So Desmond Ritter, can he at least competently execute an offense more often than not? Uh, that's the only question mark that I have for top three potential. Uh, higher upside in dynasty leagues. From K Belize seven, is it Jerry Judy or Michael Pittman? Hmm. Mm. I would go Jerry Judy there. That, that's where I'm at too. He's, I would go Jerry Judy. He's a year younger. Um, when he was on the field last year, he had a really good target market share. I don't think Cortland Sutton is long for this team. And if you're talking about the highest upside, that means both quarterbacks are good. Russell Wilson gets it together, and he's good. And Anthony Richardson it turns and develops and is good, but Anthony Richardson is still going to be a mobile, uh, you know, guy. Whereas we know that Russell Wilson has supported high end wide receiver ones over the past. So I, I think ceiling wise, you're looking at at Judy, who's also had his fifth year contract picked up. So he's basically under contract for two more years. All right, that is going to do it for today's episode. But one more reminder, Jason, who is choked up. I don't know if you have it in you, but the Megala Show. Megala Show. Live in Los Angeles at the Palace Theater, Saturday, August 26th. The only live show of the year. Come, take part. You will not regret it, I promise. Ballerslive.com. Go get your tickets. We hope to see you there. Another episode on Thursday. Thanks for joining us today. We Goodbye, will see everybody. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.